Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another installment of Scott Selections here on Saturday, March 16th. Uh, we've got more college basketball picks for you today. Before we do that, instead of recapping the uh, entire bas uh, college basketball card yesterday, I kind of was in the middle of traveling a lot yesterday, so I ended up having to upload my video early, so I was unable to recap my picks for the last two days, so I will be doing that now. As of right now, our record is 6-3 and three overall, all at lines of minus 110. And our last two picks, well, the video that I, the last pick that I had was in Texas Southern game, but during the preview for that, Montana, the Montana game, which we took originally two days ago, which was at minus 8, was currently at halftime, and they were up 13 at the half. Somehow, Montana, I'm not going to roast anybody or I'm not going to complain about it because, you know, it's college basketball and it happens. But when you have minus eight and the team you bet on is up up 12 with about a minute to go and they only win by six and they only win by six because of the fact that they were up four with one second left and fouled. I don't really know how you get outscored by eight points in the last minute of a basketball game before the final foul. Either or, we ended up losing that Montana pick. However, we bounced back nicely with Texas Southern yesterday as the line was at minus eight, and they were able to beat Alabama State by double digits in the SWAC. Game went exactly the way I thought it would, where Texas Southern's the class of the conference. They've won the conference tournament for the last two years, and Alabama State just simply isn't that good. And they were unable to keep up with Texas Southern offensively as Texas Southern covered the spread. So that brings our record on this show to six and three. And we'll be looking for another winner today on Saturday. The worst thing you can do at this point in time, although we've hit 66% of our picks so far, is to get complacent. We all want to keep winning. Uh, you know, yesterday's a history, tomorrow's a mystery kind of thing. And we look to keep providing you with solid content to uh, an insight to get you some more money as you look to build your balance towards the March Madness tournament. So with that being said, we're going to be looking at another conference tournament game in this one as we are going to be looking at the Ivy League uh, actually as a conference that we have not looked at yet. And specifically, we are looking at a somewhat early matchup at 1230, which is where tip off is going to be between Harvard and Penn in a game that's going to be on a neutral site in Yale. And this is the IV semifinals, because unlike other conference tournaments, they only let four teams into their conference tournament, while the other teams do not get in. So this game is going to be in a neutral. Harvard's currently a pick them. It's, it's minus one or so at some spots briefly, but overall it's predominantly pick them at this point in time. Lines bounced around, but it's at pick them right now. So just to recap both teams' season so far, uh, Harvard is 17-10 and 10 overall, and they are 10-4 and 4 in conference play, where Penn is 19-11 and 11 overall, and they are 7-7 seven and seven in conference play. Now to go through some trends, the Penn State Quakers in the last five meetings are 1-1 sorry, just the Penn Quakers, uh, are 1-4 and four ATS in their last five meetings against Harvard. The Crimson are 3-0-1 oh, ATS in their last four Saturday games. And the Crimson are also 5-1 and one ATS in their last six games versus a team with a winning straight-up record. And the favorite is 11-2 ATS in their last 13 meetings. Overall, Harvard is minus one in some spots, so technically that could count as a favorite angle, and Harvard should be favored by by tip off. But the main reason why we like Harvard in this game is similar to the methods that we've been using so far that's been profitable, where we've been looking at regular season matchups and we're looking for any trends. And these teams have played twice in the Ivy League so far this season, and Harvard has won both games by at least six points. And they played a couple weeks ago, and Harvard won that game as well. Penn has had issues scoring against Harvard as they've scored less than 69 points in both games this season against the Crimson. Now, also to talk about a statistical angle that we always try to find, where we try to do with one little betting nugget between both teams and where there's a massive you know, disparity in terms of stats, and we found one in this game. Both teams are not great free throw shooting teams, but one is significantly better than the other. Harvard is shooting 70.7% .7 from the foul line, which ranks the 173rd in the country, which is average to say the least, considering the fact that there's about 360 teams. But Penn is shooting 64.3% from the foul line, which ranks 336th in the nation. So Harvard is significantly better. They're about 150 spots better in terms of free throw shooting than Penn over 6%. If this game comes down to the wire, which it probably should be, which it probably should based on the fact that it's a neutral and it's between a line that involves around pick'em or minus one, 
I always want to be on the better free throw shooting team. And the worst thing or the most painful thing that you can witness in college basketball, if you have money on a given team are the missed front ends of a one and one because you just missed the opportunity entirely for two free points. And Penn's free throw shooting is atrocious where Harvard's is still over the 70% threshold and should be able to do enough at the foul line in order to capitalize on some free opportunities in order to sweep this three game series against Penn in the regular season. So that's going to do it for this installment of Scott selections here with Scott Reichel and statsalt.com. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe for daily betting content as we look to push Scott selections to a seven and three overall record all at lines minus 110. So that's going to do it. I hope everybody has a very profitable Saturday, and good luck with you and your bets. Have a good day.